I bought some bullets and some other stuff. And the next day I, I did a post and I'm like, Hey, shout out to local business, Rothbury hardware, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know, check these guys out. He talked to me the next day and he's like, I seen you, I seen you posted us on Facebook and gave us a big old shout out. Why, why would you do that? And I'm like, I like to promote good guys, man. I mean, I, yeah, I had good you gotta stay there. local. He's like, hey, Claudette, awesome, can you man. verify if we're live? Guys out. You are. He talked to me the next day awesome. and he's like, sweet. I see, I see you posted us on Facebook. Uh, hey, somebody, I think somebody's got some feedback. Yeah, Claudette, why don't you uh, think you might need to mute your line there? Sorry. Awesome. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, you're good. Cool. Yeah, guys, we are live. We'll give it just another minute since we're a little bit early, but just uh, want to make sure we're up and live uh, ahead of time so we're not running late. <laughs> so we're going to get started in exactly one minute. Sweet. Sweet. Can we have like a countdown, like a, a really distinguished <laughs> yes. thing down? Absolutely. <laughs> T minus 10. Where is it live at? On Atlas's uh, Facebook? Yeah, it'll be live on the Atlas Facebook page. Uh, and then you can, you should be able to share it from there as well onto your page. So Nice. Oh, there we are. I see us. We're live! <laughs> uh, well, with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here a couple minutes early. We'll make a couple introductions. So Tiara and Claudette... Um, let me pull the chat open just to make sure I can monitor that as we go. Rock and roll. So Claudette's got the chat. So uh, anybody that is commenting and saying hello out in the uh, Facebook Live community will be able to monitor those questions. So Jody Parker, nice to hear from you, sir, down in Louisiana. Thanks for being on early. Um, really excited yeah. for today's Atlas Pro Talk. We are joined by two incredible individuals in our industry, uh, Mr. Justin Woodruff from Ready Roofing Company out of uh, North Carolina, and also Andy Near out of uh, beautiful Shelby, Michigan, is joining us as well. So, guys, how you doing today? Good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Wonderful. appreciate appreciate you guys being here uh, as we uh, dive deeper into the the quarantine mode and uh, this new life as we know it with. Uh, the business impacts that we're feeling with the COVID-19 situation. And we'll spend some time talking about that today. But uh, more than anything, really just wanted to uh, talk to you guys really about things that you think um, are, um, you know, uh, impacting your business in the short term and the long term and what you're doing, what advice you would have for other contractors who are looking down the pipe of the same things you guys are. Uh, so Justin, I'll kind of start with you. Um, you know, what are uh, the things over the last couple of weeks that you guys have had to do to sort of um, create some new processes for both your customers and your employers in this, uh, in this new, brave new world? Well, so I know, you know, for instance, they just shut our state down uh, Sunday and um, they shut our uh, county down, Wake County, which is a huge county, I think Friday. So we were adapting to that and we said, well, we'll just go door knock, you know, um, in other counties. And then all of a sudden on Sunday, they shut the whole state down. And it's like, wow, you know, now it's real. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as a business owner, that's scary, you know, it really right. is. Um, so what do you do? So uh, we uh, had already adapted before that and we started doing, you know, digital roof inspections and now, um, you know, we've had a couple, uh, and now we've actually really had to step it up and that's going to be our, our number one thing. So, um, you know, one thing we're doing now is, is the virtual, yeah, no contact, um, you know, roof inspection. So what we'll do essentially is we'll get a call in to the office. We'll schedule the inspection and we'll actually go still go out to the home and we'll climb up on their home and we'll do an inspection. We'll take all those pictures and company cam and we'll put together a nice report. When we get back to the office, we'll go ahead and email them over a Zoom link. And we'll have that client jump on a Zoom call with us, just like we're doing here. And we're, we'll share right. the screen with the PDF on it and show them the report and then make a suggestion to them whether or not they should have their roof replaced, you know, from uh, from storm damage or whether it's a retail roof or, or whatever the scenario is. Um, so that that's going to be kind of our whole approach, you know, moving forward um, is just no contact the whole time. There still are some people sitting at home that, you know, um, 
you know, by the grace of God, they haven't lost their job. So they're in a position right. where they're still thinking about these things. And, you know, maybe they're sitting at home and they're thinking about it even more. Um, and so it, it is a perfect time. It sounds strange. I know it does. Um, but for some people, it really is a perfect time for them to start taking care of these things. So we're Absolutely. still able to do it. And other contractors are still able to do it. And I'd really encourage them to understand how to get this process started. Yeah. So, you know, you, before we got on the live uh, feed here, you made a point to me that I think is unbelievably important is you have to assume essentially that uh, your potential customers are not sure that you're open for business because so many businesses are closed. Mm -hmm. So mission number one is just figuring out on social media, on your Google business page, and certainly on your website, you've got to very clearly communicate that you are open for business. And here is how we're making sure that we're taking care of you. In sure. addition to being able to take care of your need, maybe talk a little bit about how you guys had to make that, uh, how you had sort of had that realization that people didn't even know you were open. Yeah, we've gotten several calls into the office and, and uh, people, that's the first thing they ask, are you, are you guys yeah. still doing roof inspections? In yeah. fact, we had one really funny gentleman who said, uh, well, that's great. I'm glad we're able to set up this appointment. Um, just have him pull up out front and sit for two weeks before he does a roof inspection. And, uh, he was kind of, you know, you know, trying to, uh, you know, bring some humor into it, which was great. But, yeah. uh, but we've been getting a lot of that. So, you know, virtually, digitally, all these avenues out there to tell people you're open, whether it be on Facebook, Google or whatnot, setting special hours is really important. And especially, you know, right there on your website, you know, anybody who has a decent website needs to have a web guy readily available to be able to make changes like this and suggestions on how to push those changes. So, you know, one yeah. thing we did was, you know, take right to the website, of course, with a, a nice display up there, um, you know, showing that we are open and, you know, although this is going on, we are in North Carolina, check your local state laws. Of course, we are considered essential. Um, yeah. Now, one thing I think nobody wants to talk about, like Andy said earlier, or, or I'm sorry, it wasn't Andy, it was actually Paul Reed I was speaking with, was speaking with too many contractors. Um, Paul Reed said, hey, look, you know, you know, selling is not necessarily essential. So, I mean, you know, is this going to, is this going to be stopped pretty soon? You know, what's going to happen? So yeah. um, if yeah. somebody has a leak in their home or their business, yeah, it's, it's essential. They need to get it, get, need to get it fixed. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Um, yeah. rain's not going to stop even though the virus is here but yeah we are open for business and we've made it known and um that's what everybody needs to do make it known that yeah. they're open and talk about how they're staying open and what they're doing yeah. to stick within the guidelines of the no contact rule you know yeah well i i showed your website here and andy i'm actually about to pop open your website as well and you guys looks like you guys uh, did some very similar things um, you know, but I think uh, communicating your open, communicating your process to give people really a sense of, um, you know, feeling comfortable with what's going on and what your process will be. What else are you guys trying to do with your customers? Have you had, you know, in Michigan is really was one of the earlier states to really lock things down. Uh, what has been your experience uh, as it relates to the customer uh, and things that you guys have had to do to sort of stay, keep, continue to operate? Well, one thing that differentiates me a little bit than Justin and uh, Justin and I do work a little bit um, on different projects because uh, you know, we have niches in different, in different markets. And so I have very, very little uh, storm restoration work where Justin does more. Um, and right. I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. like very uh, primarily uh, retail work. Um, and so, you know, I don't do any door knocking zero yeah um once in a while i'll do a little cold call into commercial building but um really the bulk of my business is um off of prior clients a website seo um but in the last couple of years i've really been doing more uh marketing on facebook and i have somebody that does my marketing for me but i think sometimes when people they have a marketer do the marketing for them um they kind of like have a hands-off approach like okay he's taking care of it i'll just go do my roofing um but I like to add my own little posts in there too. So that, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when I'm reading, sometimes when I'm reading a, a post, a, a marketer will do, you can tell it's not coming maybe from a roofer, the way it's worded, you can kind of right. say, well, it's kind of generic sounding or kind of, mm. um, uh, so I like to add some stuff in there, my own post uh, to give it a different flavor. Um, mm -hmm. And uh maybe some unique pictures or copy, you know, different captions in there for what have you. But um, that way also I can see what's going on on my page 
on a, on a daily basis. Um, I, I know a lot of guys, they don't check their page. They think their marketers got a handle on it. Um, but I think it's good for you to be in there, see what's going on. Um, stay up to date on the comments. You want to make sure that you're following up with people really, really quickly. Um, um, just to make a note here, people think Facebook's for play or social media is for play. It is, it, it can be, but we don't look at it that way. It, it is for work. And you, if you right. want to use it for work, you can use it for work. Um, I like what Justin was on a, Justin was saying this the other day on a, on a call we were on. Um, social media is not to be used, it's to be abused. And you can really, um, people are using it for a very, very small percentage of its capability. And uh, right. that only proves now in the last couple of weeks um, that, you know, it, this is playing out to be social media can definitely be used to our advantage. And I think a lot of people are behind the eight ball on that. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, we, we were uh, talking about this last week as well. And um, there's been a lot of statistics posted about the average usage of people's time on social media has gone up significantly in the last couple of weeks. I get my own screen time report and my screen time report has gone up. You know, you think about just four hours extra time. I mean, it's unbelievable really how much more time we're spending. So I think for you guys, whether you're in a retail environment or in a storm restoration environment, the reality is people are much more fixated on their devices because they're home, because they can't go to an office. There's less time in a car. They're not going to B2B events. They're not, you know, uh, out necessarily in front of uh, customers. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you know, we are on our phones so much, you know, and, and it's incredible. And I, But I think that's where, as a marketer, to your point, Andy, it's, a, it's a really important that you're paying special attention to what's happening and not just sort of phoning it in with a marketing company, right? It's great to use outside sources for things you can't all do yourself, but you need to know what's actually happening. So yep. um, maybe- Can I, can I reiterate bit, something on the, on yeah, the tail end do. of what Justin said? Um, Cause he was talking yeah. about making sure that your doors are open, make sure people know that. But I, I think it's also important to let them know that you're also being mindful of your own company. You know, you want to keep your employees yeah. safe. You're, you know, we want to, um, I put in a, I give all my employees a, a letter to carry on them in case they get stopped or asked um, just yep. to say we're doing essential work that is deemed necessary by the state. Um, and then at the end it says, and I'm reading off my note here, I'm taking precautions such as practicing social distancing, keeping six feet away from people, no handshakes, no fist bumps, uh, blah, blah, blah. Keeping my manager updated, up to date on my health. Um, just so people know, like, we're not just putting our guys out there um, at risk to make more money. We're actually yeah. taking care of needs, but we want to make sure everybody's taking precautions. Yeah. Was that a, has that been challenging for you internally within your, your, uh, your own business, just getting everybody to sort of buy into that? Or were people pretty quickly like, Hey, we get this, like, you know, were they seeking that from you or were they hesitant when you came out with the new policies? What, what has that been like internally for both of you guys and your businesses? No, they, they were pretty receiving of it because uh, a few of my guys are like, Hey, we got, we, we, we want to work. Are we going to work? We're going to work. But then when you ask right. them, you're, they're like, well, I'm a little nervous to go to that town because I heard there's somebody confirmed sick up in that town. And then, right. so like they want to work because they need to make money. But in the other side, they're concerned for their self. You know, right. so um, we, we had to wade through like, OK, as long as we take these precautions, uh, we're not going to overexpose you. Um, we're going to mm -hmm. give you a letter and let, let's practice these things. Wash your hands more often than you would normally stay six feet away from other people, even your coworkers. Like we got to keep right. that in front of our mind. So but they were pretty receptive. Yeah. Hey, we just got a comment. I think is really uh, an interesting comment, Justin. I'll let you jump in there. But. You know, there are some states where construction of any type is not considered essential. And I think that may be coming to some other areas as well. Um, you know, specifically Pennsylvania seems to have a much stricter sense of what that looks like. And, um, you know, maybe emergency repairs are, but really going out for a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a regular, re, uh, you know, remodel retail type of call would not be. So, you know, how do you, are there things that you can do to try to keep uh, the business going virtually without actually being able to even leave your house. I think that's another thing that a lot of contractors are facing today in areas with that are uh, significantly harder hit by some of this. Um, I mean, obviously there's not, but so much you can do if you can't physically be on a roof. Um, yeah. and, and, and speaking in terms of sales, it's, it's, uh, 
uh, it's not as bad as like actually doing repairs or something. Cause you got to be there to do the repair. I mean, it's all there is to it, but I'll tell you, man, uh, I think for the commercial guys and even the residentials too, what you can do from home is start going down your call list. I mean, we have right. thousands of contacts and, uh, now is a great time. I was actually speaking with um, Paul Reed earlier today and I was like, Hey man, <laughs> I need to revisit these maintenance contracts. Cause I think I'm going to start sending, you know, some of them out and going after some of these older roofs, um, you know, that we've right. done just to generate some extra income and uh, just going down the, uh, the contact list. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think now is a good time to not just stop and sit at home and be helpless, but you know, for like Pennsylvania, for instance, I saw uh, where that person had, had men mentioned uh, Pennsylvania. Now's a perfect time to start, you know, maybe putting together some mailers, you know, doing things that you couldn't do because you were just so busy physically. You know, um, maybe, you know, maybe you run your business a little bit different and you're a little bit more hands on, um, you know, taking this time to start creating some content, possibly looking into different tools to use, different apps to do, doing the things that, you know, you didn't really have time to do before, you know? Yeah. I think a focus on your website too. I mean, you guys, in, you know, I think it's, uh, if you have people and great resources to help you get that stuff done, that's great. But there's a lot of people that sort of keep pushing the website project off or keep pushing the, hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to sort of cultivate my social media, you know, pages a little bit. And that gets pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. What better time to really actually dive into a project like that? And there's no shortage of people out there in these roofing communities that are willing to work with you on it. So interview people, you know, figure out who yeah. can be a good fit to help you with that stuff and help you market. Yeah. Uh, and Justin, I want to pivot back to that point about sort of internally at Ready Roofing with you. You know, what has been the, you know, sort of the sentiment with your employees on uh, the policies you guys have put in place, sort of customer reactions, anything interesting mm -hmm. that they've come across with customers that maybe you didn't really know how to deal with or hadn't dealt with before? So one thing that everyone needs to be doing, especially if you're considering, um, you know, this SBA loan that they're, they're talking about doing, you know, small yeah. business administration, you need to start counting your losses. But let me just tell you what's happening with us here at Ready Roof. And so one thing that we are doing is um, we we're doing meetings every single morning and every single night. Uh, you know, virtually, you know, through, through Google, well, you know, we have Google services or whatnot. So we're just using Google video to chat with the whole team. Um, we're, we're, we have a, what we call a Corona task force. So only a certain uh, amount of people in the company will meet every night at seven o'clock and we'll just talk about, Hey, have we had any losses? You know, has anybody said no, you know um, you know, how are you feeling about everything? So we do that every night at seven with the admins, but then every single morning uh, with our residential and our commercial team, uh, we have separate, uh, you know, meetings, just like we're having here. Um, yeah. And we come up with our uh, uh, plan of attack for the day. And we talk about, you know, priorities, you know, getting jobs, you know, called up and paid, closing deals that need to be closed, you know, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But one thing we are doing every night at seven is we're logging losses. Um, that person said, no, they wouldn't let us, um, you know, get on their roof because of the coronavirus. So we actually write down that address, we put it in a spreadsheet and we put an estimated uh, loss there. Um, and so that's something we do because with the SBA loan, there's a couple different ways you can do it from what I understand. There's uh, going through your local bank, uh, which actually I would encourage doing that versus going straight to the government um, because right. they may have a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, inside information about your particular business and your needs and the way you're structured. So um, so we're counting all of our losses. We're counting what it costs us to run our business. We're, we're doing all these things. So my employees, obviously, they, they're not happy about it. It sucks. I mean, I'll just be real with you. Um, and I, I'm not the kind of guy, I'm not going to church it up. Um, in fact, I have a list of uh, some things I've learned from this already. I'm actually looking at the list over here in the corner of my eye, but um, it, it's scary. You take a business like us, right, that, that grew in three years, well, we're not stuffing money to the side. We, that's just not our, our motto. You know, we, we, last year, we invested all of our money back into the business. Mm -hmm. So what that means for us is we have to have constant capital flowing through the company. Well, now what's happened? They've shut the whole state down. Are they going to do it for a month, two months? How long are we going right. to sustain, you know? Um, and those are the things for really small businesses that are scary. So uh, yeah. my, my guys, are we're, we're lucky enough to, um, you know, have, have a, a great, I know everybody says this all the time, I'm almost sick of hearing it, but 
everybody has a great culture, you know. Uh, so we have a great culture here at Ready Roof and a great, great people, um, you know, yeah. that we, we're all surrounded with. And, and they've, they've been really great to work with. And we're just focusing on things that are in our control. That's what we're doing, yeah. plain and simple. Um, yeah. And Andy was kind enough to share the letter with me that these guys need to be carried in their vehicles. And that's something that we're actually, I'm putting together tonight in an announcement email that I do once a week um, so that they'll have that to carry around. But um, it sucks. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah. you know, hey, everything's going to be okay. For some people, it's not, you know, but I can tell you but the good action side is of this. Important. <laughs> action is extremely important right now. And this is when you need to act and fight for your business. And, right. and that is, I think, key. You've given a, a bunch of really good, practical, actionable items just now. And I think if you guys are watching this, and we hope you are, we hope you're getting as much information from as many of your peers as you can. But number one, you know, if you're evaluating or trying to understand this SBA loan, which, uh, you know, again, if you if you don't know where to go for that, you know, I'm sharing that on the screen right now, sba.gov. That's the U.S. Small Business Administration. You cannot miss this. It's right there. Learn more. Um, but I think the really important takeaway, and I don't, I don't want to put your words in your mouth, Justin, but you guys haven't decided whether you're going to need this, but you're trying to prepare in the event that you do decide to take this uh, opportunity and, and apply for one of these loans. Is that a fair statement? We are going to apply for it, but we, we're are. going to do okay. it through our local bank, and they are just now getting information in this week on how to go about that. So we're going Got to hold it. off. Okay. So what we plan to do is go ahead and get the funding for that um, and then put that to the side. Uh, if you're able Got to it. use that money and prove that you, you use that money to keep your people employed, uh, then it's all forgivable. Um, so. Got it. The most important part right now, if you're considering this loan and there's nothing wrong with this loan, this is this is not a handout. We pay money in taxes for a reason, so don't be ashamed to take it. But um, right. the most important part right now is collecting the data. What does it take to run your business on a daily basis and then start recording right. your losses? And, and it's going to yeah. take it's going to be aggravation. You're going to have to do the data entry. You're going to have to fire up the spreadsheet and uh, and, and make it happen because. Uh, Collecting the data right now is uh, is extremely important. It's vital. Yeah. Well, I think it's also important, too, to remember that, you know, hell, last week it was three and a half million Americans filed for unemployment. So the pain that you're having to go as a business and the employees are having to make to adapt to the new normal, which is, hey, this is what we've got to do, you know, is helping make sure that they can continue to have a job because that's what we want. Right. We want people to continue to work and stay employed. And we don't want to have a, another you know, three and a half million people filing for unemployment every week for the next several weeks, that would be catastrophic. So the small business loan, if you are a contractor, you need to dive into this immediately and really good practical information to start coming up with a process to log your losses. Yeah. Uh, and again, another great point. I did not know that, that it was actually a choice on whether you wanted to use your local bank or, uh, or uh, otherwise, but that's a great point. And then this, this letter, I've heard this a few times. My dad actually works for TSA up at the Grand Rapids uh, airport in Michigan. And he, he was carrying a letter uh, probably three weeks ago. Uh, but this is also a letter now that there's a, I'm assuming there's some templated versions. Where did, how did Andy, is this something you came up with on your own or did you find something online where, how would somebody find uh, this type of letter if they haven't yet got that and they're out running repairs and need something in their truck? Well, it's kind of funny because um, the first way I kind of came up with the, the basis of it was every flipping supplier sent me their policy right away. So right. I had like 12 versions. Okay. Oh, this right. is how Beacon does it. This is how ABC does it. <laughs> and right. so, um, and uh, there's a, but then I went and looked at the, the uh, executive order that uh, Governor Whitmer sent down and just kind of skimmed through that. But there's a couple of important, important things that have to be in there when um, you're looking at it. Um, one of them is you need to make sure that it says that, they're working at their own free will. You, your, your employees, if, if somebody were to stop them and say, hey, you know, what are you doing out here working? Well, my boss told me I got to work today. That, that's, that's a no-go. That's probably going to get fined. And so um, right. you need to go, I need to go over with my employees and say, you don't have to work if you don't want to. Um, we have work if you want, but this form says, and I'll read it right off here. It says, um, I am working of my own free will. And so, and I'm working mm -hmm. on essential projects. So um, I just looked at my state 
uh, executive order. And if you're in one of the states that is actually um, at a stay at home order or whatever, I would go to that and, and uh, read through it. And the funny thing is in the roofing community, I hear a lot of people say, I heard this, or my buddy told me that, and I heard this. And they'll ask me, and then I'll say, well, did you actually go to the website and read it? Well, no, I haven't. Well, then all you're right. doing is you're basing your decisions off of hearsay. Yeah. Right now right. in 2020, that is a bad, a bad spot to be in because, you know, it's like the telephone game. You could have bad information, misinformation, um, and you need to go straight to the horse's mouth and hear it um, from, you know, your governor or from a government website so that uh, you're following, you know, the right policy. So yeah. um, there's a there's a great website here, Andy, I popped up for everybody. And this was actually referenced from NRCA's website. So the National yeah. Roofing Contractors Association had this link up. And there was a really good town hall yesterday that Reed Ribble put on with his team. But yep, multistate.us. I mean, this is, uh, it, you couldn't ask for a better sort of uh, NRCA's sort of toolbox of where to go. But multistate.us, if you scroll down the page, you'll see the stay at home orders, what is considered essential business. So this question that I continue to see so many you know, posts on Facebook and what's what guys, you know, um, it's all right here for you. So if you want to cut through the Facebook white noise and get right to the deep, the real uh, situation, you can click here to access this tool. And it's basically a Google document that's being updated and uh, you can find your state. So if you just go to Michigan, for example, you click Michigan, it'll tell you exactly when it was ordered and what the, what guidance they're following. Um, you know, and then North Carolina, you know, we're looking here for you, Justin. Again, there's a lot more of a sort of a clarification definitions of essential business in North Carolina than sort of following the national protocol. So I highly recommend you guys checking that website out because I think it could be a great resource and it's being updated every day. Hey, Stan, can we put that in the comments as well? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great for all these these other roofers that are, are wondering, uh, you know, this the same same thing. Because that's, yeah, that's the Adam bad is part, man, is like, it, there's so much hearsay, you know, that goes straight to the horse's mouth, like, like you said, and that, that website's perfect. And then you can check the guidelines. And then Andy, could you post in the comments your, what you're using, your, your sheet, which you, I think you've shared already once. I was, I was looking for it this whole time, but I couldn't find it. It's actually a two part yeah. thing. I think you keep referencing the sheet. I do give them a sheet to keep them on hand, but I also gave them a lanyard with a little plastic, uh, thing placard and it's and it's a it's a smaller version of that uh, I'm doing essential work um, and I'm taking precautions just just an additional you know and I told the guys if you're going to go to work you have to wear these lanyards just to you know because yeah. I've heard of a yeah. couple guys already get pulled over job site shut down they got sent home so yeah. Uh, really, really good practical advice. We'll, we're going to get the multi-state uh, uh, link posted up there to the Facebook Live. And then, uh, Andy, if you're willing to share some of that stuff, too, uh, we can add that uh, as a comment to the Facebook uh, feed after the thing's over. Um, yeah. But I think that, yeah, I think it, it's another good point that, like, you know, it, it almost gets frustrating to a certain point watching some of the stuff that keeps circulating on Facebook. You know, it's like the good and the bad <laughs> of social media. You yeah. see a lot of things that are unverified, continuing to get reposted. Everybody wants to post stats. What I would recommend is focus on your business and focus on your family. Those are the two things that matter right now. Stay out of the, you know, the fray in terms of, you know, commenting on, uh, especially as it relates to your business profiles, you know, focus on your home and focus on your employees because um, everybody's got to be staying still right now and sort of uh, taking this really seriously because it's getting serious. Uh, and, and I think you got to be, uh, you know, mindful of that. Um, so, you know, guys, there's a lot going around in terms of selling virtually and then this whole idea of digital and door knocking. So I'm going to ask us to take kind of a hard pivot on the, for the last couple minutes here. What are you guys doing? Is it mostly outsourced? Are you guys finding success and continuing to generate leads the last two weeks or have you seen that drop off dramatically what's the interest out there for people looking for your services today is it is it the same as it has been or is it or is it changing with the ways that you guys are generating leads um you want me to take this one andy or do you sure i'll, I'll follow okay. up i got my own spin on it <laughs> okay um yeah so so i i think now is really the perfect time to you know, to be doing ads on Facebook, to be honest with you, and to be doing, yep. more, um, you know, uh, Google um, ads as well and uh, adding more content to your to your website and whatnot. But, um, 
You know, we've always run ads. We just always have. Um, we use Swiggle Media for our ads, um, and they do a great job. Uh, like Andy said, they're not putting out ads that, that look, uh, you know, like it's not coming from a contractor. And uh, I say here recently, we, it, it's just been real steady, you know, with uh, with people calling in and with, um, you know, with, with Facebook. But I think it's a great time to, yeah, tweak your approach. If you're not doing the ads, start looking into doing doing the ads um, on Facebook because everybody wants to do it. They hear about it. They hear about all these, you know, lead companies, that, you know, that are out there that are selling leads. But, I mean, you can generate your own, um, you know, and there's a lot of guys, a lot of marketing companies out there that, that do it, and they do it for contractors specifically. But, um, right. you know, start running the ads. The ads work. I mean, they just do, you know, you geo fence, you know, to, around the neighborhood, you know, you're specifically targeting. Um, and then, you know, you, you get, get those leads in. create a quick video of you in your office. Hey, talking about COVID-19. This is, you know, Justin with ready roofing, you know, have your logo right behind you, whatever it may be, have a couple of shingles behind you, you know, have a mask on if you want, whatever, and uh, do some nice creative videos and then pump some ads out and uh, they'll, they'll work for you. Like I said, there, yeah. there are people out there that, that do need your services now and they're quarantined at home, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, for so us- it's really uh, a double down time. Your traditional marketing <laughs> obviously is in some ways taking a backseat if you're out actually knocking doors or, or hanging, you know, door knockers. But I think the, you know, you're saying sort of double down on some of this digital marketing. Cause again, you got a captive yeah. audience. Yeah. And, yeah. and video's key. I, I even, yeah. you know, I, I see stuff, obviously you're promoting your business and your service. I saw something you did last week that was absolutely brilliant, which was promoting other businesses, Justin. So I, I mean, yeah. you were out, you know, showing that you were supporting local businesses, supporting uh, restaurants as a business to show that you're supporting other local business. I think the impact that has, not only it, it's very sincere, you're out meeting with uh, the local restaurant there, but it also shows that you're mindful of what's really going on and the broader impact this is having on the community. What, what, you know, gave you that idea Did you just strike you that you were going to pick up some food and you made that video? No, not at all. I just, I understand the struggle that they're going through as a small business owner and it's tough, man. I mean, yeah, there's me with La Casina, but you know, we go to that restaurant all the time, you know, and actually we're putting on a roof for them at one of their locations in Durham, North Carolina. And, you know, here's the deal. They might not be open, you know, next week. So uh, right. what, I, I just literally had the idea and I said, let's do it. And we went to five local businesses and we pumped the video out there and, you know, just kind of letting people know, hey, they're open too, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's something we did because, you know, it, it's a little bit easier for us. We have a, a marketing, you know, team that consists of three people and a videographer and, you know, it's a little bit easier for us. But, um, you know, but still, you can do the same thing with your, your iPhone and whatnot. I mean, heck, they, yep. they make all kind of great gear. I mean, look, you strap your iPhone on this thing and shoot all kind of professional videos, you know. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. But, no, I don't know. I just feel for small business right now, any small business. I don't care. There's yeah. company less than a mile from me, you know, and I, I, I hope they're doing well, you know, and yeah. I yeah. hope everybody's doing well during this time. And I don't mind helping anyone out that needs the help. And uh, especially if we're able to do it. I mean, that took us a couple of days between getting the content and, you know, creating it. And it just really wasn't that big of a deal. And I don't expect anything in return from it. You know, sure. but what I do care about is my town still being able to thrive while this is going on. I love Clayton, North Carolina. You know, yeah. I grew up in yeah. <clears throat> Nightdale right down the road, probably shed a tear here in a second. Good Lord. But, uh, but I, I just, I want them to, I want them to stay open, man. That's just all there is to it. Yeah. These, these are absolutely yeah. tough times. If you think you're having tough times right now, think about a restaurant. I can assure yeah. you that it's way worse for them than it is us. And it's, it's just no sad question. and I hate it. You know, I hate it with all my heart. And, uh, yeah. you know, I hope, I hope that we can all pull through this, whether it be roofers, restaurants, hospitals, any, anywhere it, it, yeah. across the globe, you know? So, yeah. Andy, bring us home with your thoughts, man. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I like guerrilla marketing. I like just kind of like simple, simplistic ways of doing things. And I'd say the number one on my list is follow up with your old or stale estimates, estimates that you sent out. Yeah. Maybe you thought were dead or they weren't interested. Um, heck, sometimes I, I'll even get a call from a, or I mean, I, I, I follow up with a customer and yeah, we decided to go with somebody else. And then you'll find out a few months later, they never even did the job. Maybe the kind, maybe the right. other guy didn't show up or, or, or they couldn't get it done in a timely manner, or they weren't happy with them. And I've had customers that were too embarrassed to call me back because they'd already told me that they weren't going to go with me. 
And I just follow right. up with them. And sometimes you'll find a, you know, a customer that, Hey, you know, I'm, I, I do need that project done. So follow them until you get a cone, a stone cold. No. Um, or, you know, that roof is done. Yeah, uh, yeah. Second one yeah. is, um, I'm not going to say her name here, but uh, I've been getting a lot of leads from a local contractor here. She's been in business for over 30 years and um, she's getting older now. So she's starting to do less and less roofs. We always forget about the, the retired guys, the guys that are on their way out of retiring. Mm. But what are they going to do with all those people that keep calling them and they don't want to do those roofs anymore? Mm. Get, get on the good side of some of these guys and right. start working with them and be like, hey, you know, that 1212 pitch, two stories, too, too steep for you, too big for you. I'll take those ones. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of your sure. customer. I'll build a rapport with them. And, um, and as she, each year goes by, she gives me a few more. She gave me 13 the other day. And wow. so, wow. um, and the beautiful thing about it is she, she's got such a good rapport with her customers. If she recommends hey, call empire, they will call empire. They don't even get other estimates yeah. because she's got such a good portfolio of people. <clears throat> That's so great. Build a network, um, like jet network or like Justin was saying a minute ago, you know, he wishes well for that, you know, guy that's down the road. that's a mile from him. We got to yeah. stop looking at everybody is, Ooh, there are competition and, no, you know, yeah. and, and, and we, I don't care how good you are. You can't do all the roofs out there. Mm -hmm. So root for the good guys, help each other stay in business that are good. It's the guys that are yep. being hacks and shoddy out there um, that, that are a real competition. Um, it's fantastic and then, advice. And it's all about building a community is really what it comes back to. And, and there's a communities within communities, which is all of you guys as roofing contractors who are all experiencing the same thing. So you know, having those connections. Yep. Yeah. Synergy. Uh, one other one I would say is um, check your marketing and make sure it's working just because it worked last year or two months ago. doesn't mean it's working now. Case yeah. in point, we started a direct mailer campaign. Um, back in February, because that's usually about the timing we do it with spring rains and everything. I don't know if your marketer does this, but mine called me up and said, hey, uh, how, how's your campaign doing? What kind of leads and calls you're getting? And I said, well, it's not as good as we usually get. She's like, well, we're getting the same feedback from everybody across the nation. Um, our recommendation is that uh, we've sent two, two uh, drops out. We got the other two still waiting. Let's hold off on those. We don't want to send them out if they're, if, you know, and waste any money. Let's switch that money or that uh, energy over to SEO or AdWords or, or, or something else. Um, and, you know, we'll just ship those direct mailers out at a, at a future time when, when this thing blows over. So just make sure you're communicating with your, yep. um, your marketing guy. Um, Absolutely. And, Keep tabs uh, on it, know where your money's going. And uh, pay, you got to pay even closer attention to it right now, obviously, especially if things start getting tight. So that's when you got to, again, start diving back in the business when things aren't as fluid as maybe they have been. So, yep. There's, yeah. um, there, there's I, a ton of different apps out there, too, for all this stuff, guys. This is, now yeah. is a great time to maybe get that oh, yeah. CRM or get that mailer app. Like one mailer app I found out about last week is Lead Scout. Yep. And I know a lot of people are talking about Lead Scout right now, but you can literally click a house, click the mailer you want to send, and click mail. And then there's your Boom. mailer sent like that. Yeah. And, yep. and I know Amazing. Atlas has a ton of tools, you know, available digitally, you know, whether it be yep. measurements or estimates or, you know, uh, speaking of your, your contact base, if you're, you know, registering them on Atlas, Atlas has all the information. Go log back into your Atlas portal yep. and start going through it and, you know, see, yep. see where you are with all your clients and start calling them, seeing how they're doing. And I bet they're answering yep. the phone right now. <laughs> Absolutely. They're home captive audience. I've had four contractors to my house in two weeks for different things that I, little projects I was just putting off. So think about that. You get, you get told by your company, you have to be home. You got to work from home. Office is closed. So you have all these homeowners across the country that are home. And, and again, they don't necessarily want you in their home, but they, but they are actually sort of like, Hey, I got some stuff I want to get done while I've actually got this sort of time at home. So I think that's a really important thing to just be mindful of as uh, as a as a business owner, guys. This has been uh, really really good advice and feedback. Can I, and can I lay yeah, out two more ahead, points? Andy. Absolutely, so, uh, man. I think now is a great time for you to specialize in something. If you're doing shingles, or you're doing metal, and it's really a commodity, man. Like if if you look just like the next hundred guys, it's it's it makes it harder for you to market that thing. Now all of a yeah. sudden you got to go on your service and, and branding and all this stuff. If you have a special system, like for example, we, we got into coatings a few years ago. A lot of my competitors aren't doing them. So that offers me an edge. Um, I go in there and talk to building owner. 
well, here's here's another option you can look at. Oh, you do that? That's a that's a great idea. Now all of a sudden, um, you know, the other guys they can't they can't compete against that because they're not offering that. So use this time right now to make sure that you're differentiating yourself. Put another weapon in your in your arsenal yeah. that you can use for giving customers another option. Um, yep. And then my last one I would say is uh, piggybacking on Justin doing that video the other day. Um, his was that was promoting another business. But if you feel like, man, I don't know what content to put on my Facebook page. Here's a super, super easy one. If you ever go to look at a roof, you um, like an estimate or a repair, that customer's calling you about a problem. Okay. They're not just calling you up because they just feel like changing the color of the roof. Usually they have a problem. Right. What better opportunity to do a, a, a video to say, Hey, uh, Mr. Honer, this is what I'm looking at today. We're looking at some uh, old pipe boots. They're cracked. And here's why it's important that you replace those. You know, maybe the shingles are going to last a few more years, but the details are what fail first. So this is yeah. how we're going to take care of the problem. Um, we're going to replace it. Just explain what you're going to do. Like yeah. if you do that once a week or every other week, you have all kinds of content. You could talk about drip edge. You could talk about underlayment. You right. can talk about ridge vent. You constantly have new content to put on your Facebook page. And it's, and it's uh, video. People love video. They eat it up. And after a while, you'll start being seen as the expert in your space because you're providing yep. value. And if that customer has that question, guaranteed, there's a bunch of other people that are scouring the internet to try to find the answers to those same questions. And it's a, it's a fantastic point you make. Uh, Justin, do you have any other closing thoughts before we sort of wrap this up for the day? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw out something I don't think anybody wants to, to talk about so much, but uh, you talk about the lessons to be learned from this. And, um, you know, as a young growing company that's only been open for three years, um, I'm very proud of what we've done. But, you know, we've done a lot to get there, um, you know, and to the point where some people might say, oh, they're growing a little bit too fast. And, um, you know, and I can agree with that to a certain extent. But so, you know, something I wrote down the other day and I was, um, you know, just thinking about lessons uh, to be learned from some of this. And, uh, you know, you know, they all, a lot of the old timers just say, you know, you got to save your pennies. You got to save your pennies. And, you know, I never really thought about that until now. I mean, look at what's happened. I mean, last month, we we're on top of the world, man. Now look at all of us, even the big guys. I know some big guys out there, and I don't mention any names, but I've talked to them, and, you know, they're a little worried, you know. Yeah. I want to end this video very optimistically, but I also want to tell you guys is there's lessons to be learned from this, too. Um, yeah. one of them is save your pennies, save for a rainy day. This is a rainy day. I mean, it is, you can't deny that, you know? So, right. um, but you know, you got to stay positive. Another one is, uh, never burn any bridges. Cause I'm going to tell you what, you know, you might want to be calling in some favors right now, you know, so you don't, you know, don't burn any bridges in your life, you know, um, live lean, live lean, even when you shouldn't, you know, don't go out and blow all that money. And I always make fun and say, you know, so the guys that don't go out there and buy that jacked up Duramax or something like that and spend all your money, you know, because, hey, look, what if this happens again two years from now? Or what if this yeah. doesn't go away as soon as we want? It's just going to hurt. Yeah. You know, so live lean, um, prepare for the worst and, and plan and uh, don't borrow from Peter to pay Paul. Now, those are some, sure. some things, uh, some lessons that, that I'm looking at in, in a very realistic way. I don't want to hide anything. You know, I, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and just, you know, act like it's not going to affect us, you know, because we're a fast growing company that's had some success. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to affect everybody. It just is. But yeah. um, it does matter what you do right now. And no matter what situation you're in, if you're a top dog and you're huge and you're the biggest company ever, it's still affecting you you still have to take action. If you're way down here, you're hurting really, really bad and you're, the yeah. negative things are starting to come in your life and you are starting to listen to all the hype on Facebook and all that, you, you have to make some changes now too. Um, and I think, yeah. I think no matter what, out of all this, we all, we all need to come together and come to a, a conclusion. What happened during COVID-19 and what did we do to make, make changes and adapt and how do we keep our business from going through that again should this happen again? Um, yeah. You know, take this as, as a really hard lesson learned because um, I know we are. And Absolutely. it's going to change our business. It just is. Um, but yeah. we know we're going to make it out of this and we know we're going to be OK. And I know everybody will. Um, and uh, the biggest thing is to, is to stay positive during all this. And videos like this, man, are great. This is so selfless. And we're giving back to the community in the ways that everyone should. And I just really encourage yeah. everybody to be to be doing this during this time, because 
this right here is what matters. I saw somebody comment and they said, great advice. The fact that we've helped one person and they thought it was great advice, it'll be a multiplier effect. That person will spread the word and three other people will find out about it. And I just want us yeah. to continue as a roofing community to, to do this over and over and over and it just be like popcorn kernels, man. Yeah. Well, all these relationships that uh, people have built over the last many years of, of uh, building their businesses and going to shows and connecting face to face now lead us to be able to have these types of virtual conversations to get really serious when things get tough. And I, I, I just love the advice. It's like, hey, we've got to stay optimistic and positive, but we've also got to be practical and learn yeah. some lessons here. But I think the reason that guys like you, you know, Justin and guys like you, Andy, are in a position to be able to make it through this is because of the investment you made in your business. Yeah, I, I, I bet you wouldn't, you know, everybody wishes they probably would have saved a little bit more because nobody saw this coming. Uh, but the fact that you've invested in technology, you've invested in great websites, you've invested in marketing companies, you've vetted a lot of marketing companies. I know you have right? You know, to get to a point where you really believe in what you're doing now, right? Yeah. And that you've got training in place and your people buy in and you do, if you have good culture, all those things matter because that's what's going to get you through this is all the people that feel like, hey, I was invested in. It wasn't my owner taking all the money and going and buying Corvettes and, you know, Duramax trucks, right? They, they're they <laughs> investing in the business and yeah, yeah you know, we're going to have to struggle through this a little bit, but we also are sort of set up for success. So, I think that's a kudos and a hats off to you guys. Um, I also want to just send a reminder out there to everybody watching this. If you're an essential business, that means you have essential employees. And at our shingle plants every day, right? We don't think about this for, for guys like me who are sitting here in my porch, you know, working from home. Uh, there's people that do have to get in their car. Your repair guys, Andy, who've got to wear the lanyards. They've got to go out to a job site. And there is some risk associated with that, right? And being out. And even if we're practicing social distancing, but really be really thinking out there about the nurses and the doctors and the people working at hospitals, people yeah. who are serving your food, people who are working at grocery stores, people who are out repairing your roof, people who are still in manufacturing facilities every day, making shingles. The people are at Beacon and Wimset and ABC Supply and SRS. Um, the guys that are, are uh, taking care of you, Mid-Atlantic for you guys, right? Those guys that are out there in a warehouse still getting in their car driving. Uh, let's make sure we keep those guys in our thoughts and our prayers and our minds as these guys are navigating having to be at an office every day too. So uh, guys, this was awesome. I want to give a can shout I, out to Can Marcy I leave one, and... one, one closing comment, Stanley? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because like Justin, Justin was saying about saving, um, this is usually, you know, Got, roofers don't like to talk about it, but I'm no different than most other roofers. I, I was horrible at saving for a long time too. I'm the son of a farmer. My dad was a chair and apple farmer. He got poor, paid about five times a year. He had to wait about six months for his money. So he, he had to save. And I, I didn't get that gene. You know, I wasn't a natural saver. Um, and so uh, it took me a long time, but I went through enough bad times that I realized a few years ago, I got to start saving, man. And like, now we have a tool with us that we can do that with. It's called direct deposit we can tell right. our bank to automatically yeah. send money to another bank and we can for, forget about it just save it and so i started with twenty dollars just how you know i won't really miss twenty dollars i just don't you know i spend right. that much on eating so just right. set it up we have time to set this up now so set it up at another bank that you don't frequent very often maybe in another town yep. make it inconvenient and start out with 20 bucks and then what i would did every six months i would double it now it's funny because every time I doubled it, my wife would be like, are you sure we can afford that? That's too much. Right. And it was painful at first, <laughs> but it, then I doubled it again and doubled it again. And after, after a couple of years, I had, I was already worked that muscle that it was, I was used to it. It was just like a bill. Yeah. I was just paying that bill, but I was paying myself. And so right. I didn't know this was going to be coming. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I didn't have millions of dollars sitting there, but it's nice that I have a little nest egg sitting there um, that yeah. we can at least weather the storm. And the second thing I want to say is we are going to be entering turbulent times in the next 30 days. You're going to yeah. have, you're going to have creditors and suppliers like, Hey man, you're, you're 30 days late. Hey man, you're, you're 60 days late. What's going on? And, and we're all in this boat together, suppliers, manufacturers, contractors, and everybody. What I'm going to tell you from past experience with me is communicate with them. If you might be like, I, I can't pay my bill on Friday. Don't, don't just not call them. Stay in open communication with them and tell them, you know, hey, 
I know my bill is 20,000. I, I can only pay 3000 this week. Next week yeah. I can, you know, do something different, but it's better than not getting any call. It's like when you're trying to chase money and nobody calls you, um, stay in communication with your suppliers and your creditors. Those are the hard yeah. conversations you need to be thinking Great about. Great points. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Great points, guys. Uh, you guys are uh, incredible for taking this time, and uh, we really appreciate it. I want to shout out to two of our live viewers who got uh, randomly pulled for our Asphalt Life prize packs. We'll send out uh, Marcy and uh, Marcy Ann, uh, Elo Roma. I hope I said that right in Pennsylvania, and also Roger Loman in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. So we appreciate both of you guys uh, for having some comments uh, during the live stream, and uh, we'll get some resources posted out. You can look for us uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. We'll be talking to contractors all over the country, uh, doing our Atlas Pro Talk, and then we have our Wednesday webinar series starting this week with Eagle View. So, guys, thank you so much again. I uh, wish you guys the best of luck. I know we'll all be talking, but uh, uh, keep sharing what's uh, working, what's not, and where you guys need help. And I think we're going to, like you said, we're going to get through this stuff together. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Stan. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Have a Thanks good one. Having... Appreciate you.